Hello there, and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 50, and I am Amy Palco, and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is where I like to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects. Now, over the last month, I've done quite a lot of knitting, so I've got lots of finished objects to show you, and some whips, and some knitting plans. <laughs> and so I hope you really enjoy what we've got lined up for you. As always, if you look in the drop box below this video, you'll see that I have extensive show notes. However, if you click through to my Patreon, and there's a link there, you will find the notes plus photographs. So if you want to see things a little bit more close up, you can go do that there. The Patreon is also where you can support this channel. I've got various different membership tiers. You can go check those out. And I also have a Ko-Fi, so if you want to support the channel without joining up to a Patreon, then you can do that there. So, as always, I'm going to begin with a card. Now, these are oracle cards, and I use them in order to kind of get some better perspective. I think of them almost as like miniature art galleries that you get to carry around with you, and then you can draw a card and it provokes you to think about something in a different way, perhaps. So I treated myself to a new deck, and it's this one here. It is the Witch Sister Tarot, and it's by Julia Jeffrey, who is a Scottish author, and she has created this tarot with an emphasis on Celtic myth and folklore and Scottish culture. So I have been really enjoying this. It was uh, recommended to me by my friend Sarah, who bought herself a deck. And after seeing hers, I absolutely knew I had to have one. <laughs> so I drew a card from this deck for us for today. And the card that I drew is rather appropriately the very first card of the deck. <laughs> and it's this one here. It's the Fool. Can you see that? going to show you without catching the ring light. There we go. That's probably better. So the words in the guide. Such wild and untamed creatures. This young witch girl and her doe hair companion are both poised and ready for a mighty leap. When the moment comes, they'll fly like the wind through the long summer grasses. But for now, they are still, scenting the change in the air that comes with the gloaming. The moon has just risen, and the blue shadows deepen and shimmer after the heat of the day. They don't know yet what adventures or dangers lie before them, but they have no doubt that they can outrun any hawk, hound or hunter. It's time to become still for a moment and listen to your instincts. It's not always easy to tune in to the natural strength and wordless wisdom that lies within us, but they are always there. The Fool also tells us to pay attention to our inner compass. Even when we fear the direction it points us in may seem ridiculous or even mad to others. This witch girl's eyes and heart are wide open, but her neighbours might call her moonstruck and chase her away. She cares little for their cold stares, though. Why miss the heart-racing joy of running with the hares, or the chance to glimpse a fairy revel for fear of their disapproval? What would you do if you didn't care what anyone thought of you? The constant chatter of our minds and the endless weighing of pros and cons so often cut us off from the vivid world of the senses and the immediacy of this moment. Sometimes we need to get closer to the earth, inhale the heady scent of sun-warmed wildflowers, feel the energy course through us and leave. Now that seemed like a particularly good card to begin the year with for this first episode of The Meaningful Stitch in 2024 because I think, you know, when we do create from that place of instinct and desire, when we are creating an alignment with our own personal values, then we create with integrity, we create with heart. And yes, not everybody is going to like what we do, but actually it's going to be important that we like what we do and that we show up for ourselves and our creativity. And that, for me, is an expression of creative sovereignty. What the fool is reminding me today is that sometimes we don't need to overthink things quite so much. Sometimes we can just really lean into where those instincts are leading us and cast on the next project. So, do you want to see what I've been casting on and casting off? 
<laughs> well, before I do that, let me tell you what I'm wearing. So this is the Thonin top. This is a beautiful pattern by Cat Weaver, who is uh, the podcaster on the Heather and Hops podcast here on YouTube. I have knitted this in Design of a Decade, which was the colorway that Jess of Ginger Twist brought out for her 10th anniversary of Ginger Twist. So I've knitted it in, oh gosh, the Merino Tweed Treat. There we go. <laughs> I got there. It's the Tweed Treat Merino DK and the Suri, the Sweet Suri Lace. Now, uh, I knitted this to go to Rhinebeck and I wore this on the first day of the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And I had a fabulous bright pink lipstick. This one's a little bit more muted today. <laughs> and, uh, and I so enjoyed wearing it. And actually, I was thinking I haven't really worn it too much since, partially because it's a bit cold here. But I decided I would just layer it up over the top of a long sleeved T-shirt and it could still keep me cozy. Now, you might remember when I was knitting this and when I shared it last time on the podcast, before I went to Rhinebeck, I think, <laughs> I um, I shared that I made a little bit of a mistake in that I knitted it using smaller needles than I was supposed to. And so the thon and top, when you see photographs of it, sits with quite a lot more positive ease and mine sits with with probably zero ease, actually. I was going to say negative ease, but it's actually probably more closer to zero. So I'll just stand up. You can see it's cropped. So it just comes to my waist. And I think, I actually, I really like the fit of it. I think I would like to knit it again and knit it with more positivities. So it looks a little bit more like it's like it does in the picture. And I'll pop a picture of it up here so you can see what I'm referring to. But I am really pleased with it. And it is this fabulous shade of bright pink shot through with these kind of redder notes. So I'm really pleased with it. I think it's really pretty. <laughs> and so I've decided to wear that today. We've had a lot of storm systems come across Scotland recently and it's all just kind of settled down a little bit, but it's still a bit grey. Though that said, I did have to put off podcasting this morning because I had bright sunshine streaming in through the window. So, you know, it's that whole situation where the weather will not will not do what you want it to do when you want it to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, we can't control the weather, so who knew? <laughs> but there you go, that's what I'm wearing. What's off my needles? Well, I've got a rather big project that has come off the needles. I have been knitting on this since October. When I was over at, um, at Madison, Wisconsin, staying with my friend Jackie Rose, she has a wonderful pattern called the Soho Square and she very generously gifted me some of her beautiful pearl Soho linen quill and we chose a palette together that was based on the colours that I had received in my colour palette from my colour consultation with Melissa Jenkins. Melissa and Jackie actually are doing a retreat in Madison in February Last I heard, there was a couple of spaces, I think there's only two spaces left. So if you are interested in that, then I highly recommend you go and check it out. You can see the sun is like streaming in through the window again. Maybe I should have waited a bit longer. Well, never mind. <laughs> We're doing it now. <laughs> so yes, Melissa and Jackie are doing this wonderful colour retreat. So you should go and check out all the details for that. Uh, I so desperately wish that I was there in person i think it's just going to be completely magical uh, but i'll just have to console myself with this phenomenal finished object <laughs> and here it is here is my soho square in pearl soho linen quill now you know that i love a half and half triangle wrap well this is Similar to the half and half triangle wrap in that it is a large, uh, in a large, very large, <laughs> a large square that you knit in two halves. However, where it differs actually is in its construction because you need to knit it slightly differently in order to be able to get these two um, stripes to, to match up in the way that they do. And there's also, you play, you're placing your stitch markers and things to make sure that you've got the ratio correct. This is the Soho wrap, the Soho square wrap, which is the largest of the options. 
there is also a scarf option, um, or not a scarf, like a shawl option, um, which is a little smaller. And then you have the wink. And I've also knitted one of those. I've shared that. I should have brought that over. But anyway, I'll pop a picture up of it so you can see. I knitted a Soho Square wink in mohair. And that was my knitting to take over to Rhinebeck last year. So this is an epic project. I cast it on in Madison in October and I cast it off yesterday. So it has not, it's not been washed and blocked. I'm not even sure I will wash and block it if I'm completely honest. I don't think it really needs it. My tension is pretty good overall. I certainly don't need to make it any bigger. <laughs> I won't put it on because I have, as you notice, <laughs> I'm trying to, to do my sound a little bit better than I have been doing it. I got this new sound system from my very dear friend Jen for my birthday last year and I used it in the last episode but I put the, um, I, put, I clipped the microphone onto this lampshade and put it beside me and then realized actually when I was listening back to it that it wasn't going to work that way. So I'm trying to put it on my clothes, but having put it on my clothes, it means now that I'm not going to try this on. So, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put some footage in so you can see what it looks like. But basically, you have various different options of how to wear it. You can wear it with that side showing or with that side showing. You could split it in half, so you've got a bit more like that. But I just love these. And if you're looking at it and you're thinking it looks absolutely enormous, and when would you ever wear it? I wear my half and half wraps probably more often than I wear any other shawl. And that's the honest truth. I, I quite often, when I wake up in the morning, I wrap myself up in one of these big shawls and I sit and have my cup of tea and knit for a little bit. And if I get cold in the evening, that's the one I put on. If it is um, blustery outside and I feel like I need a little bit of, I need, I need warmth first and foremost, obviously, but sometimes you just feel a little bit vulnerable moving out into the world and you need a little bit of protection. So this is kind of like, maybe this is just a big security blanket. Maybe that's what I'm telling you. This is a security blanket for adults. <laughs> but that's how I use it. And I, and I just love it. The colors, oh, aren't the colors amazing? I'm so happy with them. So this is Pink Pop. This is dark denim, this is clover green, and this is blue blue. <laughs> and uh, so it uses two skeins of your two main colours, so two of pink pop, two of blue blue, and then you have one of clover green and one of dark denim. And uh, these are all colours which were in my colour palette. Uh, I am a sultry winter, <laughs> and so uh, which shocked me to my core because I was absolutely convinced I was an autumn, but uh, but no, I am a winter, and so this is some of my colours, and I think you can agree that these are colours that really do work for me. <laughs> so it's such a delight to wear it. Um, I've mentioned, I think when I've shared it before, that it kind of reminds me of the United Colours of Benetton. Uh, if you remember that, I don't even know if they're still on the go or not. They used to have a shop in Edinburgh. It's not there anymore. But I remember going in there as a teenager and these kind of um, colourways were, were kind of, I could totally imagine them on the shelves in that shop. So I'm going to get a, a lot of wear out of this. And needless to say, now that it is off the needles, I am <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I need to cast on another one. In fact, I even went on to the Pearl Soho website and picked out another palette. And it is a beautiful palette and the linen quill is on sale right now, which is terribly tempting. So I think I might just have to. I might just have to. It's such a fun way. If you if you are working with a particular palette of colours, 
then it's such a fun way to start putting colours together and seeing what you think of them, particularly if they're colours that aren't necessarily ones that you were wearing before. So, um, so yes, I have got a colour palette in mind and I'm very, very sorely tempted. So that might be happening. The other thing, other reason why I really like to have, um, I'd really love to have another Soho square on my needles is because it is a wonderful project for when I am studying. So I'm currently studying the foundation modules for the Faculty of Astrology's um, accredited astro astrological course. So I've finished the first one and I submitted my homework and I got um, really lovely feedback. So that was very reassuring. <laughs> and I'm now working through the second module. My classes started last week and I love to sit and knit garter while I am reading all of the articles and books and everything that I need to read for that. And then also I like to knit through any kind of podcasts or audio lectures that I'm listening to. And then I also knit through class. And really my mind is very much on what I'm reading or what I'm listening to. And so uh, it needs to be something very simple. I, I can knit without, without looking at it. Uh, if you're wondering how I read without or read while I'm knitting, I tend to read on my iPad, and uh, and it means that when I'm sitting and knitting, it's sitting just right in front of me, and then I can I can swipe my pages um to the next to the next page, and so that makes it just a very simple simple way to read. I think it would be much harder to read a paperback novel whilst you were whilst you were knitting. Maybe maybe that can be done. But I kind of need both my hands for my knitting. So, <laughs> so yes, that's how I do that. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so I would like to cast on another one. And I would like to knit another Soho square because rather than another half and half, although I will share more news on the half and half front, the, one of the reasons why I love this so much is because I am very motivated, I've discovered, by colour changes. <laughs> So there is something about, you know, knitting to the point where you're going to change the colour and then you're going to change it again and then back again. And then, of course, you're knitting to get to the other half and then knitting to get to your next colour change. So I did find that was great motivation and it really kind of spurred me on. And uh, and yes, that's I think that really kind of encouraged me to get this this project finished. And then as I was beginning to get towards the end, uh, I, I just kept thinking, I just really want to have this this beautiful wrap to wear, whilst wet, particularly whilst the weather is still quite chilly. I, I would really love to be able to wrap myself up in it, and that really motivated me to to get the cast on, cast off. Sorry, and I cast off using the uh, knit two together through the back loop method, which has created a little bit of stretch, not a huge amount. But just a, a little bit, you can see there. But a bit more than I think I would have had if it had been a cable cast on. I cast off, sorry, and I did a long tail cast on. And I think the long tail cast on with the knit two together through the back loop uh, creates a, quite a complementary cast on and cast off. I will try and show you there. So you can see the pink is the cast on and the blue is the cast off. It, uh, it also has a, a little I-cord edging. So on either of the other two edges, we've got this lovely smooth edging and we're using German short rows rather than wrap and turns. So I'm just in love with it. I'm so pleased with it. I'm so pleased that I powered through and uh, and yeah, of course, now that it's done, even although I cast it off just yesterday, um, I'm missing it a little bit on my needles. And <laughs> and yeah, I think I will be, I will be ordering some more, some more linen quill. The linen quill is just such a delight to knit with. It's very the word I keep using is marshmallowy. <laughs> I don't know if that's an accurate description or not, but there's something very soft and quite sort of, um plump there's like a a real kind of loft to it whilst not uh, losing any drape 
which I really appreciate. So it is just, it's very soft. Uh, uh, it's got um, just such a lovely handle to it. I really enjoy knitting with it and I really enjoy wearing it. And it does, it has a real weight to it as well. I have knitted a half and half in Holst Super Soft, one strand of Holst Super Soft, and it's very warm and um, a bit more rustic, certainly, um, but I would say that it's much more lightweight, whereas this has got a certain heft to it, which I think also really contributes to a beautiful drape. So there we go. I have cast off my beautiful Soho Square by Jackie Rose in Pearl Soho Linen Quill and it will not be my last. <laughs> the other finished object that I want to share with you is actually a design of my own. So I was very kindly gifted uh, one skein of each of the colourways of the new Scottish Yarn Festival for ply yarn. I've got one here to show you. Oh, this is Dewar. It is 350 meters and it's 80% Shetland and 20% Cheviot and this is the color Dewar. It is a beautiful yarn. It is also, I, I'm going to say it's a rustic yarn because it's a non-superwash um, Scottish breed specific yarn but it's so soft. It's really lovely. It's, it's just an absolute delight to work with. But anyway, I'm getting ahead with myself. I was gifted uh, one skein of each of the colorways. And I was thinking for quite a long time, what did I want to do with this gift? Because it was such an amazingly generous gift from Eva of the Scottish Yarn Festival that I wanted to really do it justice. And I had lots of different ideas, including the heirloom cardigan, uh, which, I, which I really liked the look of as well. And I thought it would make a really beautiful heirloom cardigan. But the thought that wouldn't leave me was what would knitted tartan look like? Now, one of the reasons why I was thinking that was because each one of the colorways is called after a clan. So they've all got these clan names. I'll show you another two. Here's Gordon, this beautiful dark blue. And this is Beard, which is one of the natural undyed colorways. Uh, this is Duncan, which is the colourway that Eva very kindly named after uh, my one of my ancestral lines. And so I was wondering what would it look like if I created a chart and knitted some tartan. So eventually, I couldn't do it over December, even though it was virtually all I wanted to think about. <laughs> whilst having to do all of the present wrapping and all of the, the prep and everything for Christmas. This is what my head was, was moving towards. Uh, so in January, I finally sat down and figured out what knitted tartan would look like, how you would achieve it, uh, how, you, how you could make it uh, an enjoyable knitting experience as well. I think that's a really important thing. And, um, and how it could be done in an easy but very visually effective way. And I knew I wanted to knit it as a cowl and I wanted to knit it in the round and I wanted it to be a long cowl so that we could uh, wear it around our necks and twist it around for extra for extra warmth. So this is what I came up with and this is called the Gither Cowl. Now I called it the Gither because the Gither is a Scottish word for together and so I thought that suited well the togetherness of a family name like uh, Wallace or Duncan or Tate, which is the three colourways that I've used in this. I liked the, the thought of the gither as a way of describing stranded colour work, about bringing together the different colours. And, uh, and also I like the idea of the gither as, because it's the Scottish Yarn Festival yarn, and these yarn festivals that we go to are an opportunity for us to get together. <laughs> They're an opportunity for us to, to be with one another and to spend time in each other's company and to experience uh, the, the 
you know, the community in a, in a physical geographical space. And so that we are actually in a dynamic relationship with each other, not just in the virtual realm or as I'm coming to you through through this uh, YouTube channel, but actually in, in, in a place, in a hall, in a, yeah, in a, in a fairground. <laughs> so yes, the gather. So what I discovered after I cast on, which one did I cast on this color wave, this color combination first? And I was kind of measuring how much yarn was being used for each repeat. And I realized that I was using up a lot more of my main color, not surprisingly, than my contrast color or my accent color. And so when I had knitted seven repeats, I decided to switch things around and I made my accent color my main color my contrast color became my accent color and my main color became my contrast color and I did that again for another seven repeats and then we finished it off by doing the third combination and I think what that's resulted in is something really interesting because then you start to see the different ways in which a color combination can so radically alter uh, how a fabric looks and that's what I think is one of the wonderful things about tartan in general is, is that it uses relatively small amount of small palette um, of colors, but the variety and the range is epic, you know, and it all comes down to, you know, the design itself. So and, and the way in which it's laid out, how many of the, these crossings you have, the warp and the weft and how that's arranged. But it's also to do with the numbers of repeats, uh, the frequency of repeats the size of the repeats and also the different colors and the order of the colors that's being used. So I will share a little bit more about tartan in general because that's going to be short coming up in, um, in what's bringing me joy because I had a lovely tartan experience I want to share with you. But, uh, but yes, that's where the inspiration has really kind of come from and that's how it started to play out within the design. What I will share with you is I am not happy with my join. <laughs> so the, the pattern has begun with a provisional cast on and the idea was that I was going to do a Russian graft in order to, to join the beginning and the end of the cowl to create one continuous loop. I did that and it looked really messy. So, <laughs> so I ripped it all back and I thought, okay, well, what I'll do instead is a three needle bind off. And I know you're probably thinking, why did you not just graft it? Um, because I don't really like grafting. So, <laughs> so I did a three needle bind off and I don't like it either. I think it looks really chunky. It doesn't, it's too chunky a seam. There, so I've thought of various different ways of, of remedying this. And I will, I will show you um, what I'm thinking of on the next one. But at the moment, this is what I have, which is this three needle bind off, which will be changing. I mean, you could still do it um, as that, but, um, but yes, I'm not that happy with it. The other thing that happened when I had ripped back my Russian graft and had uh, started on the three needle bind off, my intention was to do a twist in the, in the loop. But what I actually ended up doing was two twists. So I don't know if you can see that. So I thought, oh no, I've made a, this is a big error. <laughs> I'm going to have to rip this back again. Let me show you like this. I'm going to have to rip this back again because it's now got two twists in it instead of one twist. However, what I then discovered is, is that because of the double twist, it actually fits better than with the single twist. And I'm going to try and do this We'll see how successful this is. If it doesn't work out, I can always edit it out, but I want to try and show you without touching the microphone. <laughs> I think I managed that, okay. How it looks with the double twist. And there's, what you'll see is you get the two layers of the double fabric from the, from the stranded knitting in the round tube. The seam sits right at the back which you can see there so you can't see that that doesn't show when you're wearing it and then it just sits really perfectly because of that double twist 
and you can see all of the different variations in how you've used and how I've used the colors. So I'm so pleased with this. It's worked out better than I than I had imagined. Um, I'm very excited about exploring different colorways. My mum has knitted two already <laughs> and uh, it's been so fun to see her different colorways. In fact, I'll maybe see if it's okay if I can pop a photograph up so that you can see that, uh, her, her color um, choices and how that shows up for her. But, uh, but yes, I'm super pleased with it. It will be launching at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase which is on the 23rd of March in Perth. So I'm going to be doing a designer spotlight there. So I'm going to be taking along some samples of the Kurian poncho, the gala scarf, and now the gither cowl. So I'm really excited about that. So if you can get along there, I would love to see you there. And, uh, and yes, we'll be launching the pattern that day. So it's all very exciting. <laughs> And yes, as I was saying, it's such a lovely soft yarn that actually is so perfect for keeping you warm, but it's still soft enough to wear next to next to your skin on your neck, which for me is quite often like a, a sensitive place, but, uh, but that just feels delightfully warm and cosy and soft. So there we go, the gither cowl. Let me take it off without touching the microphone. There we go. <laughs> so yes, there we are. And so that kind of takes me on to what's currently on my needles. So it might not surprise you to know that I have a second sample of the, of the Gither Cowl. I am knitting this again in this, the Scottish Yarn Festival 4-ply. And this is being knitted in Anderson, Christy and Bruce. Let me show you actually, I can, I can show you my cakes. They're actually sitting very neatly and lovely in this lovely little bag, which is from the cocoon tree. And here are the cakes. So Anderson, Bruce, Christie, as my auntie pointed out, easy as ABC. <laughs> so those are my colors. And this is how it's looking so far. So I've completed the first set of repeats. And I've started on this so one over halfway on the second. And so I'll do more repeats of this with the orange, the Christie as the main color. And then I will switch to Bruce as the main color. But I'm very pleased with that. And this is going to give me, a, you can see the provisional cast on here. And this is going to give me an opportunity to instead do a proper graft. Uh, I've decided I'm, I'm just going to go for it and uh, hopefully it works out. I've given myself a little bit more room before the stranded colour work has started than I did in the first one. And that is something that I'm discovering about doing um, designs is that the more samples I knit, the more adjustments I can make and um, things that I can notice that I can do a little bit better. And so each of these samples will be slightly different from the from the previous. but. Uh, but yes, each one is hopefully an improvement. <laughs> oh, and I need to show you this too. I have this beautiful sunstone and amazonite stitch marker, which is from Nicole of the Time Weaver. And these beautiful Time Weaver stitch markers are actually available in uh, Ginger Twist now. So you can go and pick those up. And beautifully, amazonite actually is supposed to encourage creative flow which is exactly what you want in your knitting, I think. Uh, so N Nicole very kindly gave me these beautiful stitch markers. In fact, she sent me on a little bit of a treasure hunt in Edinburgh, which was very fun. <laughs> and, uh, and I found them at Ginger Twist. <laughs> so you can go and pick up some of these beautiful stitch markers too, but I just thought it matched my, my knitting so beautifully uh, that, I just had to, that I just had to be the stitch markers that I used for this project. So that is what I'm working on. I'm, it's, it knits up, I'm finding it's knitting up quite fast. It's actually a combination of, in fact, maybe you would like to see inside, because this is my, these are my floats, so I can show you. So there is no more 
than five stitches in one colour, which means that you don't have any floats that are going to be longer than five stitches. So that makes it very easy because you're not having to catch any of your floats. The other thing is, is that we're actually doing a little bit of mosaic knitting to ensure that the, uh, the vertical stays uninterrupted. But that is super, super simple. And then the other thing is, is because um, all of this is inside, so you're not going to see, you're not having to break your yarn at any point. You, um, you're starting at the beginning with your, with your three strands and you're not having to break your yarn. So there's, there's very little weaving in to do. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say? There's very little weaving in to do. And it just makes for a really fun and simple, but very effective project, I think. So I think, I think you will really enjoy the knitting of it. Even although it looks complex, it's really not. Um, I think you can, I think you can absolutely do this. And I will, of course, be recording a tutorial, uh, a video tutorial that you will receive a link to as part of the pattern. So if you've never done um, stranded colour work before, then it, it would be a, it'd be a bit more of a stretch, but I absolutely believe that you can do it. I do two colour, uh, I do two handed colour work, which means that I'm throwing and I'm also picking. And uh, I, I think, yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think it's worked out really well. So that is what I'm currently working on. I'm working on other things, but actually I want to show you the other project that I've got planned, which is going to be the third version um, of the Together Cowl. And it's actually going to be a short one. So rather than making it the long with the double twist, it's going to be shorter with one single twist, which means that the main colour is going to be Baird, the contrast colour is going to be Gordon, and I'm going to use a little bit of my leftover Duncan to do the accent colour. And I'm going to do that for half of the cowl and then I'm going to switch. So this is then going to become my main colour, contrast colour, but this will stay the accent colour. So that's the plan for the for the next one. So I've got, I really want to crack on with that because I have to get the pattern written. I'm going to get it off to the tech editor and I need to launch it on the 23rd of March. So 23rd of March still feels like it's quite far away, but I know that it's going to come up really fast. And so I really need to get a wiggle on with all of that. So there we go. That is one of my whips. And let me show you the next one. The next one isn't actually for me. The next one is for my youngest son. So my youngest loves knitwear and he loves his jumpers that I knit for him and he basically wears them all the time. He wears them to death. <laughs> Which we realised when he came for Christmas and he was wearing the Albion sweater that I had knitted for him using whole super soft held double in black and it's a beautiful pattern by Michelle Wang uh, who I think designed it for Brooklyn Tweed and so when he arrived with that we realized he had a hole in in the elbow he had burst both the ribbings in the the cuffs and the ribbing in the hem was burst in three places. So my daughter very kindly <laughs> did uh, the darning of the hole in the in the elbow and I fixed the burst hem and I had to fix the burst hem of the burst cuff on one side but the other side was so far gone that actually the only thing I could do was to was to cut it off and to re-knit it. Unfortunately, that jumper is knitted bottom up and the sleeves are also knitted bottom up. And so what I had to do was I had to take one of my very fine chai gu needles and passed it through the right leg of each one of the stitches of one row going round just before moving into the ribbing. And then I cut the ribbing off, I cut the cuff off and then took back the, the yarn until I was at a point where I just had all my stitches sitting on a needle 
and then I re-knitted the cuff. So that's that's what I did over Christmas. <laughs> Black yarn <laughs> at the point where we've possibly got the least light um, in the country. But anyway, <laughs> but we got that all done. But it did make me really realize that actually this jumper is on borrowed time <laughs> and he needs another. So I had a bit of a discussion with him and I showed him some options and he chose this beauty because I did tell him I'm not re-knitting the Albion in black because it's too dark. Uh, it's a lot of textured uh, stitch and trying to do that in black yarn with very little light at this time of year but he just wasn't going to get it anytime soon. So I said, we need to choose a different pattern and we need to choose a different color. And, uh, and then I will knit it for you. So I showed him some options and he chose Stick Season by Rebecca Klo, who is the Crea Bea here on YouTube. Uh, we decided that we wanted to try the Drops Daisy yarn. I had heard really good things about it and he wanted it in light gray. Huzzah! <laughs> A yarn I can see. Now this is a beautiful pattern. It is so clever. The construction I think is going to look really good on him. I think the, it's going to sit really nicely on his shoulders. We've got this textured stitch which sits across the, the chest and then when you split for sleeves you move into the stockinette. However you are still carrying through this rib design which is going to go right the way down and into the 2x2 two two rib at the end. What I'm trying to currently decide is about the neck band because the neck band is a 2x2 two two rib and it's a folded over neck band and, and stitched down. However what I'm thinking is about possibly doing a roll neck uh, because my youngest is a singer and he, he has scarfs and things, obviously, but I thought maybe having something that was up closer to his throat might keep him a bit warmer, um, might keep his throat warm for his, for his singing, um, and I think he would actually look really good in it. So that's what I'm currently trying to decide. But at the moment, it's just this round and round in stockinette with the ribbing at the side. One little tip that I will give you that I'm that I'm currently doing is that when I run out of yarn and I'm running out of yarn relatively quickly because Drops Daisy, there we go, here's the colorway, Drops Daisy is let me see 110 meters which is 120 yards per 50 grams. So it's coming in 50 gram balls, it's a non superwash merino it is incredibly soft. Like I was, I'm so surprised. The stitch definition is incredible, but like I said, it is in these 50 gram balls. So you're having to, having to introduce a new ball of yarn relatively often. And what I am doing, like you'll see here, I've just run out of another ball, but I've tried to make sure that every time I run out, I am back at the ribbing in this side and that way I can weave my ends in and start the next ball and because it's the ribbing you can't actually see where I've started the next on the outside you can only see it on the inside so for example yeah here so I'm just weaving that in as I go basically so I'll do a couple of rows with the new ball and then I'll go back and I'll weave in the end of the old and the end of the new into this uh, into this section here. And basically what I'm doing when I'm weaving in my end is, is basically um, Swiss darning or duplicate stitch. So you're basically you're just following the line of the stitch um, at the back. So that um, so that you can't then so oh, you've just lost a stitch. Um, so that you can't then see it. It's just a very neat way of weaving in your ends um, and it's very effective and I think because I'm doing it down this ribbed seam you then can't see where I've started the next the next ball and I think you know it's always a good idea actually to start the next skein 
in a place like on the on the side or in the back rather than on the front because if you'd um, started the new ball in the middle here then it might be obvious from the front but as it is you're not going to be able to see it at all in the sides hidden in the ribbing. So you go top tip. <laughs> so yes this is a beautiful pattern. Um, I, as I said I'm knitting it for my youngest uh, son and it's a pattern I think which can work for, for women and for men. There's quite a few projects if you go onto Ravelry and look or if you go onto Instagram and check the hashtag you'll see that there are both um, male and female bodies wearing these beautiful this beautiful design and uh, and yeah I'm really pleased with it and I'm really pleased with the yarn so I'm excited to maybe try this in other colors I had I was watching actually um, Rebecca talking about this yarn on her I think it was maybe her most recent episode or maybe the one before but she was saying that she was slightly concerned about uh, whether it was going to pill because it was so soft I think she's knitted one of her recent designs the one that's just out for test knitting the lauder which is this glorious cable adventure uh, with a quite a similar shoulder construction as the stick season but i'm pretty sure she used daisy for her first sample of that and i think she's a bit concerned that it's going to it's going to pill and it's not going to stay looking as pristine as it did when it kind of came off her needles i I'm not seeing any kind of fuzzing or pilling of this as I'm as I'm working it. Um, but what I will say is that my son is very hard wearing on his on his knitwear, so we will definitely get a, a very good review from it because <laughs> or a very in-depth review of it. <laughs> it will be uh, it will have been put through its paces and uh, and we'll see how it holds up. So Maybe I'll, I'll wait until he's worn it for a week or two <laughs> before deciding whether I'm going to buy more and, and knit more in other colours because I think his brother would also really appreciate a jumper in this. Uh, he loves cable jumpers, so maybe if I wait until the lauder comes out, I could knit my, my other son the lauder. So there we go. That's my next whip. And I'm keeping that in this beautiful... What was this? I can't remember what this one's called. The Blue Rabbit House. And this was exclusive for Cross and Woods, which is a fabulous yarn shop in The Hague in, um, in the Netherlands, which I visited in October 2019. However, I actually bought this from the last Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, I saw it being advertised and I was like, that is for me. And in fact, I'll just show you. I didn't show you this earlier, but I'm actually wearing my my woolly lacy swan socks that my friend Sabina made for me which are just beautiful so we're all we're all swan like <laughs> so what else do i have for you so well after i was thinking about the half and half triangle wrap and the soho square and you know really wanting to have another big uh, garter project on my needles I remembered that I already had. <laughs> so you might remember this too, but this is a half and half triangle wrap. It's by Pearl Soho. The construction is a bit different from the Soho square uh, and it is just two solid colors. So I have the London Brick, which is a colorway from Woolly Knit in their British Wool 4 ply. In fact, I can show you here. Um, so this is one shade and my other half is going to be burgundy. So I love these two colours together. I think they're gorgeous. This is slightly more orange red than is in my winter palette. However, I think that's the great thing about, um, well, partially about the half and half because this could be the half that sits behind the burgundy and the burgundy absolutely is in my colour palette. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to bring in another shade that perhaps goes with other things in your wardrobe but um, introduces that very beautiful strong burgundy shade as well so as you can see i have made some i haven't knitted on this in absolutely ages so i will pop this beside my computer so i can pick it up during my class 
and and I can knit on it when I'm doing my my reading for my for my studies, and that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be getting a little bit more work put on it now. And then I just have one last work in progress to show you, and it is this. Now, I think I shared in my last episode that my mum had surprised me with a yarn advent and it's beautiful yarn advent that she had put together with two by with two kits uh, two kits two sets of four ply bfl four ply minis from river knits and one was in the brights and one was in the jewel was it one was jewel toned and one was muted i think anyway I had so much fun opening up all of those. I'll pop a little photograph up so you can see the colours. But then I was trying to look around for projects uh, that would really allow me to have fun with my with my advent. And I tried various, I cast on a couple of different projects and nothing kind of stuck. And then I just tried to get really quiet. I suppose this is, you know, coming back to this full card that I drew at the beginning of our, of our um, episode that I just tried to get really quiet and ask myself, what is it that I really want? You know, what, what is the knitting experience that I really want? And it was brioche. I love brioche. I find it very restorative, therapeutic, meditative, relaxing. And then the resulting fabric is so plump and bouncy and cozy and cuddly that it's just it's com it's just such a comfort knit for me and after all of the busyness of december and coming into the the cold stormy january it's it's that kind of comfort that i've really been looking for and so i came up with a project and this is what i'm this is what i'm doing so i've written down notes so i do know how to recreate it um if it does come out as a pattern i decided i was going to call it fairy um, which is spelled F-I-E-R-E, -E, which is an old Scots word for friend. Um, it's actually fear, but uh, the wonderful poet Jackie Kay wrote a lovely poem, which I'm going to read for you at the end of this uh, of this episode, called Fury. And she said that she calls it Fury because it gives her more um, more rhyming options. And I like Fury, so let's call it Fury. <laughs> so this is the Fury Wrap. And this is what it looks like. Oh, hang on a second. That was the wrong side. Let's try that again. <laughs> but that's the wonderful thing about brioche is there, there is a right side and a wrong side, but it's reversible. So you can see I've got, I've done quite a lot. <laughs> There's still quite a lot to go. I'll show you the other side, actually. And so I've just... I'm so in love with this project. <laughs> I really just wanted to keep knitting on this and doing more and more and more. And, and then, of course, uh, my other whips have kind of um, called to me insistently. And I knew that I had some deadlines around that. Like, for example, I really want to be able to give Xander his stick season jumper uh, next month. And I really have to get the, the, the gither cowl sorted so it can launch on the day that I want to launch it. So that has kind of been, you know, sort of the demanding knitting and the um, the Soho Square as well was something that I could knit on while I'm doing my study and I can't really do that whilst I'm knitting on the brioche. It needs a little bit more attention from me than, than just straight garter does. But you'll see that it's kind of knitted on, an, on the angle. So we've got some decreases on this side and we have some increases oh dear let me show you i should have woven the ends in and then you would have been able to see it clearer we've got increases on one side well, actually that's the right side <laughs> increases on one side decreases on the other just very simple and then interspersed with this uh, garter section now the idea of this is that you get an opportunity to play with the colors in an advent or with your scraps. So each colorway 
gets an opportunity to play with two others. So for example, this lovely kind of dark teal here gets to play with this sort of olivey lime green and it gets to play with this lovely burnt orange and then it gets an opportunity to shine in the garter in between. And then the burnt orange gets to play with the teal and it gets to play with this beautiful raspberry and it gets an opportunity to shine by itself, etc, etc. Can you see this? How cool is that? <laughs> now running out of hand space. <laughs> I'm just working all the way through. And then this is where I'm at just now. So I've just finished the, I think I've just finished. Hang on a second. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I have just finished that brioche section. So I'm going to be going into a uh, where is it? Uh, garter section using this lovely dark purple. So that's next. So I've still got quite a few, uh, few colors to work through. Basically what I did was I took two different project bags. This is a beautiful bag that was gifted to me by my friend Alexandra and it's uh, Pajauta Makes and this is a lovely bag gifted to me by my Auntie Lorna, who is the wonder behind uh, the cocoon tree. So basically I put all of one uh, set of minis in one bag and all of the other in the other. And then I'm just taking one out, at, you know, alternatively, alternately. Uh, so I get kind of like a, a random um, exploration of the colours together rather than working through them as a fade or anything like that. I really wanted to see how these amazing colours work together. So I'm just going to take some of these out. So I've got quite a few greens and blues left. There we go. So that's going to be coming up for the more muted colours. And then in the brights, I have these ones. So still got quite a few to go and I've been collecting all of the little leftovers and popping them into here so you can see kind of how much yarn is left over from the minis after being used in the two brioche sections and in the you can see there you go for scale <laughs> uh, and the garter so really not very much but what I thought I could do is I could maybe pop these all together and um, create like a magic ball and uh, maybe do that you know the ingredient and, and moving through the rainbow I'm not quite sure what I would use that for yet but that's maybe some color work or something I think could be fun so yeah I'm just kind of collecting up all of my little leftovers you'll see that I've got a rather large leftover there that is from the cast on and the first color and I've done a little well, I think I've only done three, yes, three increases and three decreases in that first section because I want to then recreate this at the other end. So I'll be ending with this same greeny colour and a slightly shorter brioche section. So it's the fairy wrap. And it won't be coming out for a long time. I think I'll probably bring it out maybe for my birthday in November. But, uh, but yes, it would, be, it would be fun to get that completed and get some people test knitting it as well. Perhaps with, if you've got a, a, a yarn advent that you opened up over December but you haven't had a chance to use it or you don't know what you would like to use it for, then maybe that, might, that would be a fun way to, to use it. Um, but I will announce more details about that in time. So I will I will keep working on that in the meantime whilst I'm working on everything else. But that was my final my final whip for just now. But I do have some plans, of course. <laughs> so I already shared this plan with you, which is the next the gather cowl. I really want a hat that goes with this. And so I have a couple of plans for that. One is that my friend Alexandra, who gave me that beautiful bag for my birthday, 
um, she also gave me these two fantastic skeins of yarn from the Petit Point Parisien, which is a wonderful per, um, Parisian uh, yarn shop, I think in Montmartre, which was unfortunately closed when I tried to go there last time. So I'm so glad I've got some. This is the Basique Sock, which is 75% Merino, 25% Nylon. And this is the Mohair and Silk, and it's 72% Kid Mohair, 28% Silk. And I was thinking I would like to use this to make myself another one of these. Now this is the Beast Beast Beret from Sari Nordland. I've knitted this I think three times. I wear them all the time. I find them really easy to, I love this shape. I like the sort of the slight slouch but it's not too much of a, it's not like a slouchy hat as such, like a slouchy beanie. Um, I really like the shape. I like the way that it sits on my head. This is knitted in Fonte Tartan. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme here. <laughs> it was a delight to knit. I love the increases. As you start with a little I cord here and then you move into your increases and then you finish off with an I cord just to kind of bring it all in. I think it sits really comfortably on my head. I just find it really easy to wear. In fact, I've been wearing this with this a lot. <laughs> that's my that's my main sort of outdoor uniform at the moment. And, uh, and yes, very much enjoying that. But I thought maybe I could knit myself a bright pink base base. And because it is 425 meters and 420 meters, I think I could probably get a hat and then possibly two probably relatively short uh, fingerless mitts out of the same yarn. So that's one thing that I'm kind of thinking about and it would be kind of fun to have like a smaller sort of project on the needles um, that would be easy easy to transport. So that's one sort of hat idea that would go with the Soho Square. The other hat idea is there's a pattern on the Pearl Soho website called the Colour Dipped Hat and it's a hat that is knitted in fisherman's rib and the way that you do it it looks like you've got looks like you're using two colors to start with and then moving into a single color for your rib and so the two colors that I would do would be my leftovers of the that's all I've got left over the blue blue and the dark denim and this is both from the pearl soho linen quill and it's both the colors and the, there we go that's where they are so it's those colours there. So I thought I could do the colour dipped hat using my two leftovers and I think that would be that would be really cute. So that's, an, that's another plan. Another plan <laughs> is you might have noticed that my very dear friend Jackie Rose has started a new YouTube channel called Jacks and Rose and she has a Patreon that goes along with that and of course I signed up as a patron um, she's a very dear friend of mine and uh, and I love championing my friends and being able to celebrate them and, and cheer on their, their creative uh, adventures. And so I have signed up for that and as part of the Patreon she is running classes on how to knit the Snow Crocus jumper by Midori Hirosa. And so I really want to knit that jumper, it is a beautiful jumper and I knew just the perfect yarn for it. Now my lovely grandma gave me some money for my Christmas and so I decided that I was going to use that to buy this very special yarn. I picked it up in Ginger Twist, I've had my eye on it forever so I'm so glad that I've got a, a sweater quantity of it now. But it is the St Magnus DK which is the Orkney Angora and I have bought it in the natural colour. Now I've always said I can't wear white but actually <laughs> it's in my it's in this winter palette and when I hold it up to my face I think no actually I can. <laughs> so how many years have I spent not wearing these kinds of colours I don't know but anyway I, I got the natural it is a DK but it is 200 meters per 50 grams so it's it's you know it's basically a, a four ply um, a fingering weight meterage but not necessarily in the wraps per inch, which is really interesting. 
and it's just the most gorgeous fluff. So it's hand dyed in the Orkney Islands, Scotland, although obvious mine is not because it's the natural colourway. And it's 50% Angora, 50% lamb's wool. And it is ethically and sustainably produced Angora, I should say, too. Otherwise, I would not have purchased it, obviously. So I have five balls of this and I will be casting on the snow crocus. I think the first classes that, that Jackie's doing and Zoom calls that she is doing are focusing in on swatching because we can swatch with whatever um, yarn weight we would like, but then we're going to have to make adjustments in the pattern according to the yarn weight and the fabric that we want our want our snow crocuses to be in. So, um, so yes, I'm going to swatch in this uh, on the Zoom call as part of Jackie's Patreon, which is Jacks and Rose. So I really recommend that you go and check out her podcast. She's got quite a few episodes up already, including some really interesting ones with uh, Mario of Minetti Tailoring in uh, Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, who takes her through kind of how he would do adjustments to various different jackets of hers. And then she has a second episode where you can see him doing the alteration and you can also see the, the difference. And uh, that's really interesting. She's got another episode with uh, where she's got Melissa on with her and they're talking about colour. And I love all things colour, obviously. So I also really enjoyed that. So, um, so yes, I recommend that you go and give that a watch and a subscribe and that you go in and check out what it is that she's doing. So is that all my plans? I think that's all my plans, which takes me to what's new to me. And you've kind of seen up most of the things that's new to me. So you've seen this and you've seen the uh, Drops Daisy, which I also I had to purchase for Xander's jumper. Uh, what you've not seen is, oh yes, you didn't see this. This is beautiful yarn that my mum gave me for, mum and dad gave me for my uh, Christmas. So... Mum and Dad went to Copenhagen just before Christmas time and they went to Knitting for Olive. And for, so then for Christmas, Mum and Dad got me this beautiful, I've got a sweater quantity of this Knitting for Olive. This is their Knitting for Olive Merino and this is their silk, Soft Silk Mohair. They're both in the colour Pink Daisies. This. You can tell I love this colour. <laughs> and they gave me one ball and one skein of I'm um, sorry, but one ball of the merino and one ball of the mohair in this beautiful colour here, which is unicorn purple. So I kind of have a contrast. So I've got one of these, but I've got a sweater quantity of these. So this would be a main colour and this could be a contrast colour. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do with it. I did see that Jorge Locatelli had brought, was bringing out a new cardigan called Milton which is going to be the sibling of Elton cardigan, which is kind of like a short boxy cardigan that's done in solid and mohair stripes. And this Milton is a much longer one, but done with the same kind of striping pattern. But actually I was thinking I've already got a Hoki Locatelli cardigan that's in a color not that far off that. So actually maybe I won't do that. Um, so now I'm back to the drawing board again. Maybe a Rachel Ilsley pattern would be really interesting using this as my contrast, like Petrichor or something like that. So yes, I'm still undecided on, on how I'm going to use that. She also gave me this beautiful skein here of the Cowgirl Blues um, silk mohair in the colourway Happy Days. So those were beautiful gifts from mum and dad. Uh, at, at Christmas time and I also got I, I did get some really beautiful things at Christmas I'm not going to share all the things that I got I was very lucky <laughs> but I did also want to show you this which my friend Jen gave me for Christmas which is Dolly Parton behind the seams my life in rhinestones love Dolly don't you love Dolly <laughs> look at her oh my goodness and it's got her clothes. And so it's just this amazing book, uh, which was, oh, this great quote. When I turned 40, it was like a switch clicked on. I'd always known what I wanted, but now I knew what to do to get it. <laughs> I 
she's just got all of these fabulous clothes. It's just her whole wardrobe, basically, but like with a real focus in on the details. And it's just so inspiring. Like, honestly. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, I'm just, yeah, so I'm so in love with this. I'm so enjoying it. Um, I could, yeah, I could just sit and, and go through this for hours and hours and hours. Easily. <laughs> Look at that. All oh, this beading. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So that was another um, new to me gift um, that I wanted to share with you that I got for Christmas because it's fabulous. Uh, the other new to me thing is a washing machine. Yay! <laughs> so last week I decided I was going to get some chores done before my class started in the evening and I had already washed a load of washing and I was putting it through a second load. Uh, I was standing beside it washing dishes at the same time when all of a sudden I could smell smoke. And, oh, so, you know, it's that, it's that horrible panic that, that sets in when you can smell smoke, but you can't figure out where it's coming from. I was all around the flat. I was checking things to see if there was any heat. I was wondering if it was coming from outside, uh, from one of the other flats in the block. Um, I came back into the kitchen. I'd already turned everything off and I opened up the door of the washing machine and the smoke came out of the washing machine. I called a couple of repairmen and they all told me that if there's smoke coming out your washing machine, then more likely it's a replace situation rather than a repair. And so that's what we did on uh, the following Thursday. We went to John Lewis and we picked up a new washing machine, which was delivered on Tuesday. So that was a rather expensive beginning to, <laughs> to January. <laughs> So that's my biggest purchase so far is, is a new washing machine. So at least I can use it now uh, with confidence that it's brand new. It's been fitted properly. I am now in the process of trying to catch up on my enormous backlog. I don't know why I've managed. It's, there's only two of us here. So I don't know how I've managed to generate quite so much laundry in just a week. But I have. So, <laughs> so yes, I'm working my way through that. But that was my other, that was my other big purchase. Which I guess just brings me to what's bringing me joy. And one of the things that's really bringing me joy is that I have started to re-listen to the Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. It's my favourite audiobook. It's the audiobook that I will turn to and listen to if I'm distressed or upset about something. I find Philip Pullman's voice very soothing. I think the pitch of it um, is, um, it obviously just, you know, I, I think audiobooks are so dependent on the quality or the sound or the vibrational quality of somebody's voice and I particularly resonate with Philip Pullman's voice and the way in which he tells this tale and so I find it a great comfort to listen to. Uh, I'm one of these very fortunate people who um, was read to a lot um, as a little girl. My dad used to read to me all the time and in fact he would record cassettes of himself reading stories so that if he was out at work then I could still have a story um, and he read to us you know I still remember being read to as a teenager certainly and, and then I practiced that same thing with my children too as I read stories to them as well and so there's something about an audiobook where you're being read to that I don't know it just feels very special and very important and I know lots of people think that the audiobooks isn't like proper reading, but I would absolutely disagree with that. I think audiobooks are completely proper reading. And, uh, and I just so appreciate being, being read to. So I am re-listening to the Dark Materials trilogy. I've started with the Amber Spyglass and we have just finished the first section in that. It's so, it, it's so interesting because it's in that first book that we have the introduction of the alethiometer and the different levels and layers of meaning, which has then really enhanced, I think, my, um, or given me a metaphor perhaps for, for thinking a bit more about my astrology class, which I've been so enjoying. 
uh, because I've been studying astrology for a long time, for over a decade, and, um, and in a, quite an intense way. It's something that I that I share in my goddess guidance sessions uh, with my clients, and so it's something I work with all the time. But studying it anew and coming in as with as much of a beginner's mind as I'm able to, um, I'm discovering new levels and layers to meanings and new ways or new strategies, I suppose, for interpreting the chart. And it feels like it's really opening up uh, a new a new depth of understanding, I think, around astrology and astrological charts. And it feels almost as though the alethiometer is the astrological chart and that as Lyra describes, you know, being able to interpret these different meanings, she said it's like there are um, rungs of a ladder. And so each rung represents like a different level of meaning. And so you just have to keep going down the rungs to unlock more meanings. And that's what I feel like is happening in my astrology class is that I'm, I'm going you know, down these different rungs of ladders and interpreting new or discovering new meanings and new ways of exploring. And I find that really, really exciting. And I love that I kind of have this this uh, wonderful story that's mirroring that back to me also. It also really makes me think of the far north, which is another thing that has been bringing me joy, not necessarily the far north, but a couple of weeks ago, we went up to Dundee and we went up ostensibly to go to an exhibition, which I will tell you about in a second. But before we did that, we went to the Discovery. Now, the Discovery is the ship that went to the Antarctic and it had um, Shackleton on it and, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of the captain. That's terrible. I'm not, I obviously wasn't paying as much attention as I thought I was. <laughs> but it was that the Discovery, the ship, the Discovery was built in Dundee and that is where it is now docked in a dry berth. So it has a wonderful visitor center next to it and you can go in there and find out all about these polar um, expeditions and what they, what they went through in order to get to these um, very far flung places and what they discovered and you know how they really had to be extremely resilient there and the, the real dangers of, vis of visiting these parts of the world. And then we got to go onto the ship and explore the ship. We were there on just the most beautiful clear blue sky day. It was cold, but just stunning. And, uh, and we had so much fun kind of wandering around the ship and the exhibition and just learned a lot. And it was just very fascinating. So if you do get an opportunity to go to Dundee sometime, I do recommend that you go and check out the exhibition. It was much more, um, it was much, much bigger than I expected it to be. Because when you look at it, the building from the outside, uh, it seems much smaller, but it must be a TARDIS because once you get in, it's just one room after another after another and uh, with lots of exhibits and lots of information on how they built the boat and and then being able to go from there and actually explore the boat itself and be on deck and below deck was just really thrilling. So, so yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, but the real reason why we'd gone up, like I said, was actually to go to this exhibition because it was the last day of the Tartan exhibition at the v &A in the Victoria and Albert in Dundee. And I had been meaning to go to it. It's one of those things where you know it's happening and you go, oh, I really must organise the trip to go there. And then all of a sudden it's like it's now come down to the last week and now it's come down to the last weekend. So we booked tickets, which is just as well because it sold out. It was very busy. Um, we went with my daughter and her boyfriend. Um, my daughter, of course, is a trained kilt maker. You've met her here before. <laughs> and so it was a real treat, actually, to go around the Tartan exhibition with Aurora because she does have so much knowledge. Um, she has a real depth of understanding about that particular fabric and its meaning. And, and how to work with it and all kinds of things. So um, so I took quite a lot of video footage of the Tartan exhibition while I was there, uh, not least because of course of the Gither cowl, <laughs> and so, uh, which I wore <laughs> when I was there. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I just took lots of video footage because I thought you might be really interested in it too. So I'm going to edit that together and pop it in at the end of this episode so that you can see that too. Uh, last few things that have been bringing me joy. Well, I stayed over at my grandma's last week and together we watched a really lovely nature programme on the BBC, which was called Scotland, the New Wild. And it was just basically talking about all these different um, wildlife and uh, and nature that's that's present in Scotland in different parts. So the first episode, I think we watched, I don't think we watched them in order. I should say that first. I think the first episode we watched was the third one and it was the Highlands. The second one we watched was the first one, <laughs> which was Islands. And the second and the third one that we watched was the second one, which was the Lowlands, which um, had some really interesting uh, animals in and around Edinburgh, including foxes. And uh, there was also peregrine falcon too. So that was that was fun. I enjoyed that. And uh, and my, my grandma really enjoyed that too. And uh, I also watched something else with another family member. So every year I like to watch The Hobbit extended editions on DVD between Christmas and New Year in Betwixtmas. And then after New Year, in the first week of the year, I always watch the Lord of the Rings extended editions. So this year, my niece got in touch with me and said, I have never watched Lord of the Rings. Uh, would it be OK if I came over and watched it with you? And I said, yes, of course. So she came over. She had made some gluten free lemon madeleines, which were absolutely delicious. We polished them all off in the first movie. <laughs> And uh, we watched the three extended edition movies together. So obviously, watching all three in one day would have been a, would would have been really epic. I think Rebecca did that recently at, at, at a cinema, but we didn't do that. We watched the first one in the afternoon. Then we had a lovely dinner together, and then we watched the second one in the evening, and then the following. And then she stayed over, and then the following morning we watched Return of the King. So that was. That was really fun. I mean, I love watching these movies anyway, but watching it with somebody who I love, who um, who hasn't seen them before, was just very delightful. So that was that was a real joy. So that that's another thing that's been bringing me joy. Okay, my darlings. Well, I think that's brought us to the poem at the end. And like I had mentioned to you before, um, Jackie Kay, who is a wonderful Scottish poet had written this poem called Fury and it was the poem that I was thinking of in relation to um, this this new mini skein design that I've been knitting but I was also thinking that you know one of the other things that's really been bringing me joy is really seeing the success of my friends you know whether it's Jackie starting her new podcast whether it's been Rebecca with all of her amazing designs coming out whether it's Jess opening up uh, the new venue for for a ginger twist it's just been so lovely to see people expanding exploring uh, and just so inspiring and yeah it just really gives me a lot of hope and a lot of encouragement to do the same for myself to continue expanding and exploring because we get to do that when we are you know in touch with our creativity but it's easier I think when we are championed by our friends so this poem is a Scottish poem all about friendship and it's called Fiery. If you went to the tapmost hill, Fiery, where we used to climb as girls, you'd see the snow the day, Fiery, settling on the hills. You'd mind another day, maybe. We ran down the hill in the snow, sliding and singing our way to the foot, lassies laughing together, how bra. The years slipping a out in the weather. And now we're suddenly old, fairy. Our friendship's ne'er been weary. We've I seen the world differently. Where would I been wi' you, my jo? My fairy, my fiercy, my dearie o. Our hair might be silver now. Our walk a wee bit doddery. But we've had a whirl and a blast, girl. Through the cold blast winter, through spring, summer, or a lifetime, my fairy, my bonnie lassie, I'd defend you. You, me, blithe and blatter, here we gang down the hill, nae matter, past the bracken, bothy, bonnie braes barley, 
Out by the roaring sea, still having a blether. We who loved sincerely, we who loved so fiercely. The snow never looked so fair, so barry, nor the winter trees so pretty. Come on, come on, my dearie, tack my hand, my fairy. So, here's to friendship. Here's to looking after each other. Here's to exploring our creativity in 2024. I do so hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Meaningful Stitch. I'll be back again really soon. Remember that you can find those show notes over on Patreon if there's anything you want to explore further. And yeah, happy making and I'll speak to you really soon.